an exquisitely themed and exotic zoological theme park, Disney's Animal Kingdom provides a unique mixture of traditional Disney park attractions while also exhibiting hundreds of species of live animals. At 580 acres, it is the largest theme park in the world. But for anyone that's braved the queue for flight of passage without a fast pass, you would be forgiven for thinking it could be one of the smallest theme parks around. Hi, I'm the Frugal Brit, and for this video, I'm going to provide a breakdown of the good and the not so good things about the second most visited attraction within Disney World to help you decide whether this culturally rich and mysterious theme park is worth a trip on your vacation. In addition to that, I'll be providing a full tour of all the themed lands, rides, and attractions, as well as providing my top tips to get the best out of any visit to Animal Kingdom. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in future Disney and Orlando vacation content. Animal Kingdom is located on the western edge of the Walt Disney World Resort Complex and is isolated from the resort's other theme parks to minimise disruption to the animals. This zoological theme park is dedicated and themed entirely around the natural environment and animal conservation which Walt Disney had a keen interest in. Also of note is the stunning replicas of Africa and Asia's most intriguing architecture and also the fictional world of Pandora, all of which will be covered very shortly. Alright, so now I'm going to give you a tour of all seven of Animal Kingdom's themed areas, including all of its attractions. I'll do this in a sort of reverse order of popularity, so starting with the less thrilling lands and attractions. With that said, let's head over to the Oasis Land, which functions as the equivalent to Magic Kingdom's Main Street USA and provides a transition from the park's entrance to the world of animals. This peaceful land features a variety of tropical trees and plants, a small waterfall, and a pond that's occupied by flamingos. Following these paths, you'll arrive at the next land, Discovery Island, which is named after the zoological park that exists abandoned in Bay Lake to the east of Magic Kingdom. Its spiritual successor sits at the centre of Animal Kingdom, surrounded by the Discovery River, and serves as the central hub connecting the other sections of the park by bridges. The Tree of Life, the park's sculptured man-made baobab tree, is located in this section and is surrounded by trails and animal enclosures. Inside the Tree of Life is the It's Tough to Be a Bug show, which is a 3D film inspired by Disney Pixar's A Bug's Life. Moving to the southeast section of the park, you'll arrive at Dino Land USA, which is themed around dinosaurs and other extinct prehistoric life. As you enter Dinoland, you'll go under a 50-foot skeleton of a Brachiosaurus that spans the fossil gateway, aptly named the Olden Gate Bridge. Just past this bridge on your left, you'll find the Boneyard, which is a multi-leveled playground area with a Columbian mammoth fossil to be uncovered and a cast skeleton of a Brachiosaurus. This is a great spot for your kids to let off some steam. Within the centre of Dinoland USA, you'll find Chester and Hester's dino Rama reminiscent of roadside attractions that were once scattered throughout the United States. This section features Primeval Whirl, a steel wild mouse spinning roller coaster, and the Triceratop Spin Aerial Carousel Ride. At the eastern edge of Dinoland USA is the Theatre in the Wild, which hosts the Finding Nemo the Musical, which is a live action musical stage show based on the story of the Disney Pixar movie. Dinoland USA is anchored by the Dino Institute, a fictitious paleontological facility which is home to Dinosaur, a dark thrill ride loosely inspired by the 2000 Disney animated movie of the same name, with your host Bill Nye, the science guy. From here, you go on a mission to find and bring back the last Iguanodon while dodging meteors and fearsome dinosaurs. Whilst Dinoland is clearly the land aimed for younger kids, I wouldn't underestimate the thrills from this attraction. Moving over to the northwest of Animal Kingdom, you'll arrive at one of the original lands of the park, which is the Africa Land. Your entrance is through the friendly and welcoming fictional East African port village of Harambe, which is Swahili for Come Together. This village was designed by Disney's Imagineers who went on a scouting trip in Africa, who brought back snippets from some of their favourite places, such as a fortress found in Zanzibar, and a water-stained, crumbling old building that was found in Kenya. The Harambe village includes a hotel, restaurants, and an outdoor bar with live entertainment. This village is the namesake of the Harambe Wildlife Preserve, 
the fictional home of Africa's main attraction, Kilimanjaro Safaris. Guests climb aboard an open-sided safari vehicle and the tour cuts through a 100-acre savanna where 34 different species of birds and animals can be seen throughout the game preserve and a great opportunity to see herds of free-roaming animals in a sort of natural habitat. For those of you with any neck or back problems, keep in mind this trip can be quite a bumpy ride. Adjacent to the Kilimanjaro Safaris, you'll find the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, which is a five-acre habitat walkthrough tour that can be enjoyed at your own pace, designed to inform as well as entertain. The headliners at Gorilla Falls Exploration are the Lowland Silverback Gorillas. Over on the western side of Africa is the Harambe Theatre, which is home to the Festival of the Lion King, a stage attraction based on the Lion King movie, presented as a celebration with Simba and his friends. Any fans of the original movie soundtrack or the stage show will get a lot out of this. Next we have Rafiki's Planet Watch on the northeast side, which is sort of a mini land within Animal Kingdom, and the only section of the park not connected to Discovery Island. Instead, it's connected to just the Africa land. Guests aboard the Freefoot Wildlife Express train for the short trip to and from this mini land. Conservation Station showcases the various conservation efforts supported by the Walt Disney Company. It also gives a behind the scenes glimpse into Animal Kingdom's animal care facilities. Following a refurbishment, the Conservation Station reopened in July 2019, featuring the Animation Experience, which used to feature at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Just outside, Affection Section is a petting zoo featuring goats, sheep, and other domesticated animals. Heading over to the northeast, you'll find the Asia Land, which is the first expansion to Disney's Animal Kingdom, which first opened in 1998. This land is set in the fictional kingdom of Anandapur, which means place of many delights in Sanskrit, the second oldest language on record. According to its Disney history, Anandapur was established as a royal hunting preserve in 1544. Anandapur contains both the riverside village of Anandapur and Sirka Zong, which is set in the foothills of the Himalayas. The Maharaja Jungle Trek leads guests through the forests and ruins outside the village. The Indian custom of turning palaces and temples back over to nature for the good of Earth's creatures is symbolised within this attraction. In this walking tour, the hunting lodge and palace ruins serve as homes to the majestic tigers that have become the royal family of this habitat. Up, a great bird adventure, is a live bird show where one of Anandapur's bird researchers educates Russell and Doug from Up about natural bird behaviours and the effects of habitat loss and conservation efforts on bird species, such as the black-crowned crane and bald eagle. In between Asia and Dinoland USA, on the banks of the park's Discovery River, is the Rivers of Light, a nighttime show featuring mist screens, water fountains, floating lanterns and light. The second most popular attraction within Asia is Kali River Rapids, which is a river rapids ride along the Chakranadi River through a rainforest. The queue winds through temples and shops, passing by ancient, decaying statues, shrines, overgrown ruins and lush landscapes, ending in the rafting offices for the Kali Rapids expeditions. In keeping with the theme against illegal logging, chainsaws can be heard in the forest near the queue. Moving to the brightly covered wooden pagoda, riders begin their adventure on the Chakranari River, first ascending a 90-foot lift hill through a jasmine and ginger scented mist. Once at the top, the raft floats through the path of gushing geysers, past a waterfall and on through a dense tropical jungle. Further on, the raft passes through a flaming bridge of felled wood before plummeting down a 30-foot slide, soaking everyone in the resulting waves. Towards the end, you'll pass through a cave and riders are dampened further by dripping water and statues of water carriers which spray water jets.
heading over to the Far East, both literally and figuratively, you'll arrive at Expedition Everest, the legend of the Forbidden Mountain, which is the visual focal point of the Asia land and the most expensive theme park attraction ever built. The queue starts at the office of the fictional Himalayan Escapes Travel Agency before taking you through a replica temple and a Yeti museum. The train departs the station to the right and climbs a small lift leading to a short drop, then circles around to the 118 foot lift hill, carrying the riders into the 200 foot high mountain. On the way up, it passes through a ransacked temple with murals of the Yeti, warning the riders that the mountain is his territory. After you emerge from a cave, the train draws to a dramatic halt as the track has been drawn apart, presumably by the Yeti. The train then falls backwards, eventually coming to a halt in another cave occupied by something else. For the remainder of this attraction, you'll experience more caves and drops before arriving back at the Circa Zong village. The final land of my park tour is of course Pandora, the world of Avatar, which is themed to a fictional alien exoplanetary moon, Pandora, from James Cameron's Avatar series. Set a generation after the events of the Avatar films and features Pandora's floating mountains, alien wildlife and bioluminescent plants. For the Navi River Journey Dark Ride, be prepared to set sail on a river journey like no other, on a moon that's light years from Earth. At the water's edge, you'll board reed boats that pass through the Kasvapan River and deep into the jungle, showcasing Pandoran creatures and bioluminescent flora, with inclusion of audio animatronics. All animals and Natvi are moving in the same direction as your journey builds to an encounter with the remarkable Shaman of Songs. marquee attraction is Avatar Flight of Passage, which is a 3D flying simulator that allows guests to fly on a banshee across the colourful Pandoran landscape. Your journey will begin in the queue as you start an uphill trek around a massive root structure, over a bridge above waterfalls, arriving at an old abandoned resource development administration facility with the laboratory partially restored. In the attraction storyline, the humans and Natvi are attempting to restore the Banshee population to natural levels which had been harmed by mining. Your next stop is the genetic matching room where you'll be scanned and sampled so you can connect to personal avatars in preparation for the flight experience. Once matched, you'll board link chairs, don flight visors, all in preparation for flying the Ikran Banshee to partake in the Natvi's tribal coming-of-age tradition. After entering a state-of-the-art theatre, each guest will straddle a single-seat simulator like a motorcycle that will deliver a realistic sensation of riding a living creature. You'll experience the swift and graceful movements of flight and even feel the Banshee breathing beneath you. And it won't take long to understand why this attraction is one of, if not the most adored theme park attractions worldwide. start with the all-encompassing and spectacularly immersive theming and atmosphere at Animal Kingdom. With its replicas of culturally significant regions of the world and themed animal exhibits, the attention to detail with the theming is second to none and a photographer's paradise. The integration of the park with the natural environment is pitch perfect. The amount of space available to this park allows for some sweeping vistas that you would never expect from a theme park. Of particular note is Pandora at night. The bioluminescent forest is mesmerising and something that you have to experience whilst at Walt Disney World. 
The Majestic Tree of Life is a masterpiece and you can understand why it is one of the most photographed structures in Disney World. It also acts as a useful central focus that helps to get your bearing around the park. Speaking of things that are useful, if you found this video useful so far, it'd be really cool if you could help the channel out with a like on the video and leave a comment if you have any insight you can share. Moving on to the attractions. Animal Kingdom does have a reputation amongst some as being a half day park, but this is mainly from those who often overlook the shows and animal experiences. With the addition of the Rivers of Light and the bioluminescence of Pandora, I do believe this is a somewhat outdated perspective. Flight of Passage and Expedition Everest are my two favourites and feature some of the best queues that you'll experience at any theme park. Kilimanjaro Safaris is well received with its entertaining and informative drivers and the animal encounters and exhibits provide a pleasant contrast to the thrill rides and can be enjoyed at your own pace. Lastly, I want to highlight the Festival of the Lion King at the Harambe Theatre, which is a phenomenal production and is too often overlooked by guests of this park. With 30 food stands, 7 quick service and 4 table service restaurants, there's no shortage of dining options in Animal Kingdom. Disney prides itself with the quality of its theme park food and Animal Kingdom is no exception here. I'll be doing a ranking of all the dining options here fairly shortly so I won't go into too much detail. So as hinted at within my intro, the wait times and crowds around Flight of Passage within Pandora are a problem. And it's a bitter pill to swallow for anyone who hasn't paid the premium to stay on Disney property to benefit from the 60 day fast pass window, as the 30 day window very rarely provides availability. Whilst the queue is entertaining, this attraction has some of the worst wait times you will ever see. I've seen up to four hours on several occasions and it can get worse. Unlike most popular theme park attractions, this isn't adequately resolved by arriving to the park for rope drop. You could argue though that Disney is only guilty here of designing a phenomenal attraction that people love, but I can't help but suspect that with its 70 years worth of experience in designing theme parks and attractions and ride capacities, Disney could and should have anticipated these issues when designing Pandora and Flight of Passage. And this seriously harms what otherwise could have been a close to perfect theme park experience following Pandora's inclusion. As mentioned earlier, Animal Kingdom has historically dealt with a reputation as being a half day theme park. One of the problems here is that it's best when experienced at a slow and laid back pace, but in reality many guests see Animal Kingdom as a park to be rushed through, in particular for those that have convenient access to a zoo back home. Many guests that didn't enjoy Animal Kingdom do often point to the fewer thrill rides compared to somewhere like Disney's Hollywood Studios. And in the cases of the Natvi River Journey, because of the high wait times, expectations are inflated for a ride that is very enjoyable but lacks the thrills many were expecting. In a similar vein, the Rivers of Light does come across as anticlimactic for expectations set by other more famous Disney nighttime shows. Part of the issue here is not being able to use fireworks near the animals, so they're forced to focus on subtle beauty rather than big moments. It is a fantastic show, but expectations do need to be managed here. The Dinorama section within Dinoland USA seems really quite out of place within Disney World, especially for this particular park. It just feels like a carnival and whilst there is a backstory and reason for it, it still feels sort of at odds with Disney's approach to theme parks in general. Rafiki's Planet Watch, which you access via the Wildlife Express train, only heads to one destination. Unfortunately, experience this attraction takes about an hour and the payoff is inadequate. Lastly, in interests of consistency with my other reviews, I must refer to the $25 parking fee as being a noteworthy, not so good thing about visiting this theme park. Before I get onto my pro tips for visiting Animal Kingdom, I'm just going to summarise very briefly. So Animal Kingdom does lack the level of thrills, the magic and the characters of other Disney World parks, and the wait times for Flight of Passage can be extremely disheartening. But at the end of those wait times is one of the greatest theme park attractions of all time, which when combined with its impeccable theming and landscape, provides what is in my opinion the most immersive theme park in Central Florida, and I'm happy to defend that. Overall, 
worth the crowds and worth the trip. All right, so I'll start off with the most important issue, which is how to tackle flights of passage. If you're one of the minority of guests that are able to book a fast pass 60 days in advance, then it's a no brainer to use it for this attraction. But most guests will have to brave the queue without one. One strategy for this is to do it first thing in the morning. If you are rope dropping though, be sure to make arrangements so that you'll be arriving at the gate an hour before the official opening time at the very latest. Another strategy for flight of passage and a personal favorite of mine is to jump in the queue very late in the evening. Whilst the queues are still fairly substantial, they will be a lot lower than other times throughout the day. And overall, it's just a lot less stressful. For Kilimanjaro safaris and the other trails, keep in mind that the animals are most active either first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening. And this works out great because these are also the best times to experience Kilimanjaro safaris to avoid long wait times. This attraction is a great choice for a fast pass slot. If possible, I would recommend booking for an hour before sunset. The animals are a lot more active with the lower temperatures. There's a much higher chance of seeing the lions and overall it's just an awesome experience. Alternatively, if you have a fast pass booked for another attraction late in the morning, it's often a good idea to hit Kilimanjaro Safaris first thing. Another strategy would be to hit Flight of Passage at Rope Drop before heading over to one of the animal trails later in the morning. For Expedition Everest, there are very short lines first thing in the morning at Rope Drop, but it is really cool to experience at night. You can also use Fast Pass on Expedition Everest, but you can save a slot by using the single rider queue. If you get nauseous on rides, I'd recommend sitting at the front if you can. If you're brave enough to get soaked on Cali River Rapids, there are three two-hour lockers nearby over here, which some guests use to store a spare change of clothes. This is a very good fast pass choice given that the queues can get very big on busy days and it doesn't offer a single rider queue. I really appreciated Nat V River Journey, but it doesn't meet everyone's expectations as pointed out earlier, so I don't think it's worth a fast pass slot, and I'm not sure I'd recommend waiting over 40 minutes in a queue for this one. Well, that's it for this tour review. Thank you so much for watching. If you're headed to Disney World in the coming months, I hope you're able to have the best vacation. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found it useful. If you do have any tips of your own that you can share, please throw them in the comments. And of course, if you're interested in future park reviews and other Disney World vacation content, don't forget to subscribe.